Joining me by phone is the Democratic presidential, uh, presumptive presidential nominee, Secretary Hillary Clinton. Secretary Clinton, thanks very much for, for being with us. First of all, what do you make of the fact that this is the third major terror attack in France in, in the last year and a half with multiple casualties, first Charlie Hebdo, then the attacks in Paris in November, now this? Well, first, um, Anderson, let me just say that uh, I am sick at heart about what's happened to uh, the French people. This was a horrific attack. While, as you know so well, friends and family were celebrating French history and culture. And it reminds us very uh, vividly and tragically that we have to stand with our allies and not abandon them, and we need to strengthen our alliances, including with NATO, not undermine them. Clearly, that uh, what is happening is terrorist groups are seeing that they have opportunities uh, inside France for both homegrown terrorism and uh, importing uh, terrorists. And I have proposed a series of measures to combat uh, these kinds of attacks, including launching an intelligence surge. And the French and our European friends uh, through the EU, through NATO, individual nations, have to be uh, willing to work with us to try to get better intelligence that will help them and also uh, help us uh, prevent attacks. Uh, assuming this was a, a group like ISIS or somebody who is sympathetic to ISIS, whether they've had any direct contact with the organization, I mean, from everything we have learned about what's happening in Iraq, there have been a number of uh, you know, victories on the battlefield recently by Iraqi forces and coalition partners against against ISIS, they're losing territory, and yet that does not seem to have any impact on the number of attacks we're seeing in other countries. If anything, it seems like those attacks are escalating. Well, I, I think, Anderson, you've put your finger on part of the uh, puzzle that we have to uh, figure out how to uh, undo. It is true that there has been progress on the battlefield in Syria and Iraq, uh, territory is being taken back. The airstrikes have been consistent, relentless. But I think it's also uh, clear that as a result of these uh, uh, advances uh, against ISIS and their main headquarters in Raqqa, uh, their uh, urgent desire to inflict terrorist attacks elsewhere um, has led them to accelerate, uh, reaching out, uh, not only directly, but indirectly through the radicalization online. I've been saying for months, we have got to do a better job combating them and their uh, hateful ideology online. And we need to enlist <laughs> the help of more uh, nations and uh, institutions to do that. Donald Trump was on Bill O'Reilly's, called, called into Bill O'Reilly's program about an hour ago, was asked by Mr. O'Reilly, quote, would you go to Congress and ask for a declaration of war? Donald Trump said, quote, I would, I would, this is war, unquote. Do you think that's the right response? Is this war? Well, I think it's clear um, we, we are at war with these terrorist groups and what they represent. Um, it's a different kind of war. And we need to be smart about how we wage it and win it. Um, so I think we have to look at um, all possible uh, <laughs> approaches to doing just that. Oh, when, <sighs> when you say we're at war, I mean, are we, who are we at war with? Are we at war against, I mean, radical jihadists, radical Islam? Who, who are we at war against? We're at war against radical jihadists uh, who use uh, Islam uh, to uh, recruit and radicalize others in order to pursue uh, their uh, evil agenda. Uh, it's not so important what we call these people as to what we do about them. And I think back to, you know, our success in getting uh, bin Laden, uh, it was important that we built the case, we got the information, and that the president ordered the raid. Well, here, we have an ideology. It's not a nation state. And when people draw uh, comparisons with World War uh, 
I would even call this World War III, it's a very different kind of war, and we could be easily misled. And I would you know, point people to read more about uh, what the hopes and ambitions of ISIS happen to be. They would love to draw the United States into a ground war uh, in Syria. Uh, they actually think the end times could be hastened if uh, uh, we had some great confrontation uh, in uh, that region. So we've got to be smart about this, not, you know, not get pushed or pulled into taking action that doesn't have the positive effects it needs to have. So I would be very focused on an intelligence surge. I would be very focused on working with our partners and allies and intensify our efforts uh, against uh, the uh, ideologues who peddle uh, radical jihadism online. Finally tonight, uh, the other thing, one of the other things Donald Trump mentioned in, in one of the call-ins to Fox uh, was basically being very critical of you for wanting, uh, he says, to increase the number of Syrian refugees coming to this country by 550 um, percent. How do you respond to that? I mean, is it, you know, is, can there be proper vetting? Is that a real security concern, uh, a justifiable security concern that people in America should have, who these people are? Well, and how Trump has said this repeatedly and has been called out for his blatant lies about it. Um, I've said when it comes to refugees, we should only let people into this country after we have thoroughly screened them, no matter how long that takes and no matter, you know, what the pressure might be to act more quickly. I would not uh, short circuit uh, the vetting process. If we're talking about women, children, orphans who are fleeing horrific violence, that's a different uh, category than uh, young men uh, or people who have some uh, record that can be ferreted out that should cause us concern. Uh, Secretary Clinton, I appreciate your time tonight. Great to talk to you as always, Anderson. Thank you.